What's up, this is EasyOSX, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller and a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con to your Mac. Now, we're going to be starting with the Switch Pro Controller, primarily because it's a more traditional controller, and it's a little bit easier to set up with the Mac and with the games. The Joy-Cons, on the other hand, while they are usable with your Mac, the issue is that they're only seen as one controller. A Switch can actually see them either working together as one controller or independently as two separate controllers. But a Mac or PC really only sees them as just one controller. This really doesn't matter on a 2D platformer game, say like akin to a classic Mario, but if you're using it with a more modern game, say like a shooter or a racer, anything that really requires both sticks or more buttons, you really are going to need to use the Pro Controller for that kind of thing. But we're going to show you how to set up both in this video. Now to start off with, you're going to want to go to your Mac in system preferences and make sure that you have Bluetooth turned on. So I'm going to go to Bluetooth preference. So I've already got it turned on and it's discoverable and all you have to do to see here is what device is already connected and once it's already on then it's already in searching mode so it can start connecting to devices. So once you got Bluetooth turned on on your Mac you can go to the controller and you're going to want to hit the sync button right up here. You're going to want to hold it for a few seconds and when it's ready to go, you start seeing the lights flashing back and forth on the bottom of the controller. Now on your Mac, you should see this label Pro Controller pop up with a Bluetooth symbol. Just hit connect, give it a moment, and now the controller is ready to go. Now it's not going to do anything out of the box. We're going to have to do a setup process with that, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Next, let's show you how to set up the Joy-Con. So the Joy-Con is going to be very similar to the Pro Controller. So obviously you're going to want to make sure you have Bluetooth turned on on your Mac and then go to the Joy-Con and hit the sync button right here. You want to hold down for a few seconds, wait for the flashing lights to go back and forth. And on your Mac, you should see the Joy-Con. Now I'll typically we'll say L for the left Joy-Con, which is what I'm using, or R if you're using the right Joy-Con. And then just hit connect. And then you've got a connected Joy-Con. Now it's not going to work just like the Pro Controller out of the box, but you'll see what it does here in a little bit. First, let's show you how to connect to Steam with the Pro Controller. Now, if you use Steam as your primary gaming platform on the Mac, and you already have Nintendo's Pro Controller set up with your Mac, then you can actually use Steam's built-in controller settings to set up the Switch Pro Controller for your games. Normally, you'll get a pop-up, actually, for if it detects it, but if it doesn't detect it or you still want to go and manually check it, I'm going to show you how to do that. So go up to the menu here where it says Steam, click on it, and hit Preferences. In the box that pops up, you're going to want to scroll down to this section in the bottom left where it says Controller, and then hit General Controller Settings. What you'll now have is a list of controller settings, and you're going to want to go and click on Switch Pro Configuration Support. You'll get the second option about Use Nintendo Button Layout. If you ever look at a Nintendo controller, compared to, say, an Xbox controller, you'll see that the A and B buttons, as well as the X and Y, are in different places compared to many other controllers. If you want to use the Nintendo layout, you're going to want to make sure that this button is set. So if a game has controller support and says hit the A button, then it will actually use the Nintendo A button. But if you want to use kind of the more, uh, shall we say, the Xbox kind of support or other game controllers, you want to turn that off here. And you can always double check based off what the picture says. Now again, this will only work for the Pro Controller. If you do have a, uh, a Joy-Con, Steam won't really use it in the same way. The other thing you're going to want to make sure is that your game actually supports controllers. So if you go to your library and you click on a game like 7 Days to Die, you'll see that it actually has controller support. It'll have this little controller icon. If it doesn't have that icon, if it doesn't say full controller support, you might run into some problems. So for example, if I click Game Dev Tycoon, you'll see there's no icon for controller support. This game is really only keyboard and mouse. So it really depends on the game. Obviously something like this game really doesn't need it so much compared to a game such as Seven Days to Die, which really can utilize, say, the, the two stick and the button prompts. So let's say you've got a game that isn't in Steam or you want to use your Joy-Con with it. How would you use this? Well, first, you're going to need a way to bind your keyboard commands to your controller. So in this case, 
I would recommend Joystick Mapper. I've used this previously in a video for the PlayStation controller, and I've had great success with the app. Um, so you're going to want to lay out, you can lay out controller schemes for just controls in general or for specific games. You can see here I've got a Switch Pro for Minecraft and I've got a basic setup for the Joy-Con. And I'm going to show you here in just a moment. I've pretty much edited this already for the sake of time, but you can kind of get the idea here. Hat meaning uh, this is direction on the D-pad, so like right or up, etc. Um, but you can also see here buttons, and the buttons map over to ones that are right here or on the top of the Joy-Con. So if we want to map a button, for example, let's say I don't have a jump button for the game I'm about to play. So we're going to hit Add New Bind. So it's created a thing. We're going to hit Scan. And then on the controller, I'm going to hit the button I want to bind. All right, it's bounded. It's button 1. And I'm going to say this is a keyboard command for the space bar. So I'm going to scroll down until I find the space bar. Oh, there it is. And now it's bound. So I close with this. And if I want to enable it, I hit that. And now the controller is ready to go. So Let's open a game like Mario, or Mario. This is a portal hybrid. Obviously, for this game, I'm not going to be able to use the portal function of this, but for the sake of what we're going to be doing, it serves as a great example. So I'm ready to play. I found the inner key to the right bumper here. So now, as you can see, if I do right, he walks right. If I do left, he goes left. A is my jump button that and I can also make him run by holding down what I call the B button or the, uh, the down button. So I'm not a particularly good Mario player. There we go. Obviously it's funny that it looks like Mario is just moonwalking across. So next let's go to the Switch Pro Controller. So you can see that uh, I've already switched over to my Switch Pro Minecraft setup. I've already bound a lot of these buttons here. So uh, you can see, for example, like the triggers have been bound to the mouse buttons. You can see the sticks have been bound to uh, either the keyboard keys, like for example, walking around or for moving up, down, left and right. Uh, also, you can see, for example, this is mouse wheel step. I bound, for example, the left and right arrows on the D-pad to just one click of the mouse wheel, either up or down. This is useful, for example, if you're going to be um, just wanting one click, kind of moving through an inventory, in this case, Minecraft's quick, quick bar. Uh, but then, for example, you also have mouse wheel, in which case we'll do kind of like a quick flick of the mouse. And I'll show you this in just a second, what this would look like potentially in-game. So with that said, since I've already pre-bound everything, I'm going to jump into a quick game of Minecraft and you can see what I'm talking about. So I bound, for example, the mouse to the right thumbstick and I've also bound the left and right uh, triggers. The right trigger is the left click, the main click, and secondary or right click is going to be on the left trigger, which will make sense in the game. And you can customize this obviously per game. So you can see I got this and I can move around. Obviously, please excuse the frame rate. This is not particularly a uh, game recording computer that I'm using. So, but you can see I can do that. I can go into the menu. I bound it with the uh, start button here, the plus button, and I can pull things out. Uh, let's say I want to, actually, you know what? Let's do, let's set this down. So you can see, for example, that um, if I do the uh, left and right on the D-pad that I've got set, you can see how it quickly like jumps through several of the main menus, where if I use the bumper, it's going to go left and right. And you can change this, obviously, whatever game you want. So if I set this down, and I'm going to make something, for example, let's say I want to make the sword. Now, one of the things you're going to notice here is that I'm using the trigger, of course. If you play the console version, you're expecting to hit the A button to select something. Um, this is still the computer version, so you're going to have to remember what mouse buttons and stuff you're using. So I'm going to make a sword. And I have now, now made my thing. And we can even do, for example, uh, if I go back here, we can make, let's see, let's do, we want a, an ax, which we cannot make right now because I need sticks. So let's make some sticks. And we're gonna make tools. And we're gonna make an ax. So now, there we go. Still, you can still see I'm trying to hit the B button out of just sheer habit. 
So, but we made an axe now, and I can go over and I can cut down a tree. This cow is very interested in what I'm doing. So, uh, anyway, you kind of get the idea here that it is going to work. However, one thing you are going to notice here is that the mouse actually escapes my Minecraft window for a moment. Most games are pretty good about not having this problem, but just be aware of it whenever you're doing this. And that is how you connect a Switch Pro controller or Joy-Con to your Mac computer to play games with. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like. And if you want more Mac tips, tricks, and advice, uh, please subscribe. You can also check us out on social media and on the website easyosx.net. Thanks again for watching.